Hi, my name is Antti Heino and I work as an AI and Cloud Advisor at SaaS. This is a four-part video series where I provide an overview on credit scoring and model ops on SaaS via. The first part focuses on exploration and visualization. The second part on machine learning. The third part on governance and deployment. And the last part covers some data preparation examples. The goal of this series is to go through the entire analytics lifecycle that you see here. We will start with exploration, move to modeling, register the models to centralized model management, deploy the models, build business logic around the models. We will also cover how to monitor and govern those models, retrain them if necessary, and prepare the data again as the cycle continues. I hope you will enjoy this series. So we start in the SAS Drive menu, which is basically the hub for, for sharing different assets in, in SAS via. But when we want to start uh, making some analysis, we can take a look at the burger menu in the left upper corner. And here you see different possibilities we have. We can look at uh, data catalog assets, um, we can prepare data, we can explore and visualize, make dashboards out of, out of different data sets, we can build uh, complex machine learning models, we can govern those models and build also um, robust business rules and, and decisions out of all, all the different models and, and rules that, that we have available. Let's first take a look at the data catalog to, to find the data set we will use for, for the analysis. And in this case, we will uh, do a credit scoring uh, model. So let's look at, uh, at the data set that would be suitable. And for, for this, I think uh, HMEQ data set uh, would, be, would be suitable. And here um, I see different data sets that match my search query. I could use more, also more complex search terms, but in, in this case, um, I, I will use just the dataset name. So here's the dataset I will be using. And here I, I see the overview information about the dataset. So the number of columns, the rows, so there is around 6,000 observations, the size, uh, some uh, overview information about the completeness of the, of the data, and then who has uh, uploaded it and, and when. Uh, there is also a possibility to add some uh, information, privacy information here, what's the time period covered, for example, um, to, to ease uh, using, using the information in, in a proper way. If I want to see more details, I can um, look at the column analysis as well. And here I see all the different variables that I have in the data set. And here is uh, first the target variable, bad. So one means um, the client has defaulted on a loan and zero means that the loan has been repaid. And on the right, you, you, can, see the, you can see the histogram information about, about the information. Um, then uh, we have the loan amount that, that has been requested and again depending on what type of information the, the variable includes the uh, visualization on the right changes a bit. Then more to due, so this is the amount due on the, on the existing mortgage. Then value, so that's the value of, of the current property. Reason, so this is the reason for, for, for the loan, so either debt consolidation or, or home improvement. Job has uh, six different occupational categories, years on the job, um, yeah, how many, how many years uh, has the has the client been on the, on the current job? 
uh, number of uh, directory reports, the number of uh, delinquent thread lines, age of the oldest thread line in months, the number of recent credit increase, number of credit lines, and the debt to income ratio. So here I have all the information about about the different uh, input and target variables. Um, I have the means, medians, minimum, maximum, and number of, of missing rows. So this is a quite good good information about the data set and there is even even more information here if I scroll scroll to the right. Uh, I can also look at uh, the met metadata so I know the column types and the logical types, the lengths and, and so forth. There are also data quality measures so it's really easy now to see how many unique values there are, um, what's the completeness of of different variables in the data set. And the next step, I can either use the action menu here to jump to the next step I want to uh, use the data for, or I can use the, again the burger menu in the left upper corner. Now that we have selected our data set, we can uh, move to the explore and visualize phase and uh, you can find it in the in the menu as well so if we go there and start by selecting selecting the data so in the in the choose data menu uh, the available tab shows the different tables that are already in memory if you want to import some data, you can always use the, the import menu uh, if you have a CSV or Excel, for example. And another option is the data sources menu, where you have your different CAS types and your database connections, if you have any. So for me, I will select uh, a table from my, my CAS library, and it will be the HMEQ data set uh, that is already in, in memory and you can see it from from the green lightning here okay but everything looks good so i, I will just hit, hit okay so we can start building the repo and the first thing i notice is that the variable bad is a, is wrongly classified um, as a measure so i can change that to to category and right after that, I can start building building the different visualizations that I need need about my data. So I can just drag and drop different data items to the canvas, and it will automatically uh, start start building by my report. And if I want to change anything about about the different objects here, I can use the right side of the um, interface here. So the options menu. Uh, change the appearance of, of, um, of the objects here and if I want to change something in the, in the, in the variables here I can change for example the, the frequency that uh, was selected as, as a standard uh, here um, I can change that maybe to, to the loan amount so I can get a get a get an idea of, of the some of the loan amounts in, in the good and, and bad uh, loans categories. If I want to start uh, from, from the object templates, I can always uh, look, at, look at the objects menu. And for example here, um, you have different type of visualizations, exploration tools that are, are needed for, for your data. So for example, I could select the correlation matrix, drag and drop that to, to a new page, uh, add some, some uh, variables here. So in this case I will just select them all and I get a nice correlation picture here. And for example here I noticed that uh, the 
uh, correlation between uh, the more due and, and the value variable is, is very strong, which, which makes sense. If I want to build some interactions uh, in, the, in the page, I can easily um, scroll down to the, to the controls, for example, and drag and drop a control object to the um, interface. And uh, yeah, I just assign some data into it. So let's say I want to look at the target variable. And I just use the right side of the menu, so the actions here, um, to, to define which, uh, which um, objects I want to link. So in this case, I want to uh, link it to, to the correlation matrix. And after that, I can use, use the buttons here um, to, to see how the correlation changes a little bit uh, as, I, as I select between the categories. If I want to maybe set up some alerts based on, on the functionality here or, uh, and the different uh, different uh, data sets as, as the data is coming in and maybe refreshes. Um, I can do that from the rules menu on the right. So these work as a display rules. And here you can define the, the rule itself, so how it uh, changes the uh, visual appearance of, of the report. But you can also allow alerts for, for the rules and define the recipients here and, and by using this uh, you can notify or email persons uh, if, if a certain threshold is, is uh, breached or, or anything, anything you would like to follow basically. But that's enough for, for the exploration, so let's do and maybe a simple model uh, about, um, about um, data. So I want to see how well I can predict the, the outcome of the, of the loan by, by using the input variables I have available. And to do that, I will start with a logistic regression. So I will drag and drop that to the canvas. And as you see here in the, in the left menu, we have a lot of uh, these um, predictive algorithms uh, here available. So you are already able to do quite, quite uh, complex analytics already in the, in the visualization interface. And this is good uh, as, as you are able to test quickly different options uh, and are you able to build a decent model out of the data you have. So next step would be to, to um, define the, the data for, for the logistic regression. Before that, uh, let's uh, create a partition variable, since I don't have that ready in the data. So I will uh, do a stratified sampling and add the target variable as the, as the variable we want to stratify by. And in this case, we are happy with maybe two partitions and select 75% of, of the data for, for the training. All right, so we can uh, then assign some data to the object and select the target variable or, or the response. So that's the bad. So whether a client has, has paid or not paid back, back to loan. Uh, then the continuous effects. So I will just select them all and then the classification effects. And there we have it, the, the first, first model. I could actually uh, add from, from the roles pane, I could add the partition ID still, so we get a, get a maybe more, um, more robust model. So now, now we have uh, also a training and, and a validation set for, for the model. And it looks quite good. Um, I can look at uh, different uh, uh, error statistics here at the top. So I have KS and Gini, for example, available. Uh, also uh, misclassification rate. So let's I can look at that. So we have roughly 7% misclassification at the moment. And if I want to look uh, closer uh, to, to the model, I can always expand the object and get more information and here, 
probably what interests you is, is the parameter estimates. So here I have the different effects that, that uh, the input variables have to the target and, and how, how they affect the probability that it's going to be a bad loan, basically. If I want to create maybe a more um, complex model uh, to, to predict the situation, um, I can always duplicate, duplicate this analysis as a, as a different algorithm. So let's say I want to build a gradient boosting algorithm um, using the same target and the inputs. So I can just duplicate it and maybe drag and drop this, this to a new page so I can have a bit, bit more room room for 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 the object. And in in, in the case of of um, credit boosting, I don't have those parameter estimates. But what is neat here is is that we actually have built in the partial dependence method here, uh, right into the interface. So I can still understand how the model behaves even though it's more of a black box model compared to logistic regression. So for example here I, I see from the variable importance that, that the depth um, to income ratio is, is the most important predictor and with the partial dependence um, method then I can understand how that affects the risk of the loan. And it seems that around um, 36% the, the risk starts to sharply increase um, and plateaus after, after, um, after a while. And typically uh, these more complex models um, might benefit from, from the fact that there is an auto-tuning option available. So let's say I want to auto-tune it for maybe 20 seconds. And, and hit, let's hit the button. So now the machine automatically tries different combination of, of the parameters we are able to adjust for the model and tries to improve the accuracy. And as you see from, from the KS statistic here, we were able to, to improve the model significantly just by, by hitting, hitting a button. So I definitely recommend that, that uh, you, you try it out. And, and maybe after auto-tuning, you, you can try always to improve it uh, even more yourself. But that always helps um, to, to get, a, get started with, with auto-tuning. All right, so we were able to create the initial models and, and we were able to determine that, that we have enough data to build a, build a decent model uh, for, for predicting the, the good and the, and the bad loans. So in the next phase, we would build a, a final uh, model that we would deploy. So for, for that, we will use uh, actually another interface called Model Studio, where we fine tune and compete different algorithms against each other so that we can get the very, very, very best model that, that uh, we can then use in, in production. So more on that in the next video.